This week's episode of Biking with Panda is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. For just $3 per month, you can help me produce new content. Having been unable to get out and ride lately, drastic action has been necessary. I've had a dream for a while to use a high-powered LED to build an overpowered bike light for trail riding. I've seen the Sigma and others, but with price tag of $300 or more, it might make sense to do it yourself, especially if we can do it for much less while putting out higher quality light. So let's get to the build details. I used a Bridge Lux, which was $37 a couple years back when I purchased them, paired with a $12 LED driver from AliExpress. You'll need some way to cool the LED because they do get quite hot. This was about 50 bucks. We'll solder on a generic power cord the LED driver so it can plug into an outlet. You just cut one off of an old appliance or get a repurposed or replacement extension cord. Then we'll add DC male barrel connectors to the LED driver so it can easily connect to the LED. I'm using heat shrink tubing on all of the wires before soldering them so it can be slid over the joint to protect and hide it later on. The LED also needs its own female DC barrel connector. These are dirt cheap. Here's a better up close look at the Cobb LED. You can see many bumps and these are individual LEDs all wired in series or parallel. They put out more lumen per watt than any other form of LED and cooling is easy due to the metal ceramic backplate. Instead of using thermal paste for LEDs, I use thermal pads, as they are extremely sticky and adhere the LED to the heatsink mostly on its own. Make sure that the copper surface is as smooth and clean as possible before adhering the pad to it. When securing the LED, don't touch it with your fingers, but do press down using some nitrile glove to make sure it's making contact. Don't crack the chip. For further safety, I'm using a custom zip tie retention bracket. The final version of this lamp will use a tapped heatsink with machine screws. The biggest weak point of my setup is the inverter battery combo. This thing is massive. It weighs 23 pounds and I lug it around on my fat bikes trailer but at 18 amp hours it provides more than 8 hours of light and most 18 amp hour batteries are much smaller so my final design will be much more practical. Thanks to the trailer though, I can also carry all my camera gear, including the tripod. The current design isn't compact, lightweight, or sexy, but it is noisy enough that it makes an i9 wheel set sound like a common ocean. Jumping this thing is a joke, but the brightness of the light, the camera really just doesn't do it justice. I wish I could fully convey how surreal this is, as it's definitely my new favorite experience. Have you ever been dying for darkness to fall just so you can go ride? I actually expected that the trailer would be really difficult to ride with in the woods, but that wasn't the case. When I'm riding with it on the road, the slightest bump will send it flying, even somehow when it's fully loaded with groceries. And I don't understand it, but on the trail it's just firmly planted at every turn. I expected to slide out, you know, maybe break some bones, but the only problem seems to be on the climbs with the lack of traction on ice.
Though the trailer is easier to ride with in the woods than I expected, this is not the final design, so be sure to subscribe and tune in for updates. But until then, you know what to do. Go ride.